in this lesson we are finally going to connect our drop-down to the departments table in your Excel file. Just to remember, this form is going to save our records to the contacts table, that's this table in our Excel file, it's called TB contact. But when selecting a department, we want to show the options from this table, that's the TB department. It's a table with the list of available departments. Going back to our app, we have this drop down that has nothing in here because it's not getting from the correct table. Let's edit this card and get the information from the correct table and save back to the department column here in the TB contacts. Creating and editing a video like this gives me a lot of work. And I just ask you to subscribe, like and leave your comments to support the next videos. Let's go back to the lesson. Let's exit the play mode and go to the card that's for the department. In this drop down, we need to put the list of departments. It means we need to connect to the TB department. As we can see, the items of this drop down is getting from the parent.allowed values. And given that, we are going to edit the allowed values property of the card to place in the correct location. So if I go to allowed values, I need to edit this formula right here. Right now the card is locked, so let's go to advanced and unlock the properties of this card. And instead of this, let's put TB department. This will bring my department table and the column is called department name. If I play the app, we can see that we have a list of blank values. This may happen sometimes, and the way to fix that is going to the drop down, properties, and then we see that the value here is showing the value property. But remember that now we don't want the value anymore, but the department name because that's the name of the column. We need to be able to change that to show the department name, but for some reason it's locked. If I remove this parent.allowed values and put again, it may work. So let's see. Now I just removed and put again, and it recognized that there is a new column called department name. Even the value now can be changed here, but there is just one option, so that's the correct option. We just needed some refresh. Just remove and add again for it to detect the new names. Okay, now we are able to see the list of departments. We cannot unselect, uh, so let's enable that to be able to unselect the values and leave it blank if we want. Let's select the drop down. And then in the allow empty selection property, let's put true so it can be empty. Okay, we are not done yet. We still have an error. It's showing right here. If we click in this arrow pointing down and click on edit in the formula bar, we are going to be taken to the error. As we can see, the error is happening in the update property. That's the property we learned better in the next, in the previous video. And there is something wrong here with the value we are getting from the drop down. If we hover the mouse over it, we can see that the error is that the name is not valid because value isn't recognized. And in fact, it's not value anymore that we need to take from that drop down, but the column name from our table. That in this case is department name. If I remove the value and the dot and put again, we are going to see department name to choose, and it means we are going to get the department name to send to the desired column, that's the department column in your main table right here. Let's close this Excel file, and now let's play the app. Now we can select the departments and create new records. Let me try again, create the Cassandra web records. We will have duplicated wet record, I will delete later, but just to see if it will save the marketing department correctly. Just put a phone and now a comment, testing, saving, 
the department. And I'm going to click on save. It's going to save, submit form. In the submit form, we have the back function that will return to this page. And now we can go to find contacts. In the end, we have Cassandra Web again. And now we can see the department called marketing that was taken from that drop down menu. Now we already know how to use a form to create a new record. In the next lessons, we are going to learn how to use a form to edit an existing record. But our first stop is in the variables. We need to learn variables first. That's the subject of the next video. See you in the next class.